Hello guys, today I want to present you something, another thing that we launched this week. It's about Livewire this time. I've been a big fan of Livewire since the very beginning and I've launched a few courses around it. So on Laravel Daily Com courses, you can see the newest one Livewire 3 from scratch, but also if you search for Livewire on courses, you have a quiz test system with Livewire, order management, practical course, advanced Livewire, and also a lot of tutorials and videos on Livewire. And in 2021, I cannot really believe it's more than two years now, I have released Livewire Kit with examples of practical projects, mini projects and components with my practical experience and experience of my team with Livewire. It started with small examples like auto-generate slug or parent-child drop-downs, but then it became more complex with model windows, live updates, multi-step forms and stuff like that. So we ended up with 43 at the time components. In fact, it started with 20 components or so and then I added on top. And today I can proudly announce that we updated all of those components to Livewire version 3. So if you purchase Livewire Kit now, you will have both version 2 and version 3 components. They will be in separate branches on GitHub. And in this video, I'm kind of advertising or re-advertising Livewire Kit again, which you can purchase for $39, all components, one-time purchase, there's no membership, and you will get an access to the repository for all the upcoming updates in the future. In fact, if you had purchased Livewire Kit in the past, you don't have to do anything. The same repository now contains the branch of version 3. But also in this video, I want to present one new component, 44th component, which was in the works waiting for Livewire version 3 to be launched. And I also want to show you that component, Form with Quill Editor. So two topics in this video, Quill Editor, we will get to that in a few minutes, but also I wanted to show you what exactly we updated in components with Livewire 2 to version 3, so you would keep that in mind if you want to upgrade your Livewire 2 projects to Livewire 3. In fact, the changes weren't that massive and some of them are just optional. I have a separate video on Livewire 3 new features and I will link that in the description below if you want to dive a bit deeper. But here are a few examples of upgrade of Livewire Kit to version 3. So probably the main thing is, and this is the Blade example, you don't need to load Livewire styles and Livewire scripts anymore. You just install Livewire and inside of that installation within Laravel, you will have everything you need. Then also a few changes to default behavior behavior in the blade file, another blade file example, you don't need to provide wire submit prevent anymore as prevent became the default behavior because pretty much in 99.9% .9 of cases you do need that prevent. So Caleb, the author of Livewire decided to switch that. And another switch was to wire model. If you needed live behavior, like for example, in this case, on change of country, we need to reload the cities. It happened automatically by default. Now you need to specifically specify wire model live. For dropdowns, in this case, it's not that significant. It was significant for text-based inputs. For example, on typing something, you need to reload something or search for something. It makes more sense to do that on ending the typing, which is on blur, which became the default in Livewire 3. And if you do want that live behavior, which would fire many server requests on each character, if you do need that, you provide wire model live here. So that's another change. And also a few more examples from another component. This time it's component, not the blade file. So you may use syntax of Livewire 3 like this one. For example, instead of defining listeners of event name and method name, you have the method name and then on top you provide on increase quantity, which uses PHP attribute syntax. And on top you need to also use live or attributes on. Also with event, the syntax changed from this emit event name to this dispatch event name. And that's almost it in all the 43 or 44 components. This is the majority of changes we made to the components. But along the way, we also upgraded the demos to latest Laravel 10 because at the time of demos, it was Laravel 8. So that's why on the left, you see a lot of changes with 134 changed files because also the skeleton of Laravel has been upgraded along the way. Like for example, we started using the return types like it became a standard in Laravel 10. 
And now let's take a look at the new component number 44, Quill Editor with Livewire 3. It's a text editor with things like bold and underline and all of that. So you can type in the text, add bold here, add, add something else, maybe underline and then save the post and then edit that as well with text still styled. By the way, this has no design intentionally, it's just the CDN from Tailwind and there's also a bootstrap version which looks like this because our assumption is that your design will be in place and our live wire component is just on top of your layout. But it's a simple layout to demonstrate the functionality. Now let's take a look at the code. So in the Laravel controller of that example, there's the create form with design template, which may be bootstrap or tailwind, you don't need that design template. This is just for the demo. What you need to know is in the blade, you load the component of, for example, post form. And inside of that component, this is Livewire component already. And as you can see, we already use some Livewire 3 features. This is the validation for title field. And this is the validation for body field that appeared in Livewire 3. Also, we reuse the same post object that's why it's with question mark and mount we use the post if it exists in the database and then on submit of the form we create or update the post in this case we don't use form objects from livewire 3 and this is optional i have a separate video on whether to use form objects or not and what are the options and i will link that video in the description below as well and in the render of that livewire component it's just post form blade in that post form blade and this is where we're getting to the quill editor we have wire ignore with alpine js code if we take a look at the website of quill editor and go to the documentation the quick start shows something like this so we need the quill library the css and then initialize new quill with this syntax so this is exactly what we're doing here in the livewire component adding alpine js to update the livewire component value so this is exactly as in the documentation of quill and this is on top alpine and livewire behavior so on text change of quill we have wire set of body and that body is the property of livewire component here and what i also didn't mention in the main blade file in the layout we have on top of tailwind from cdn we have this quill also from cdn in the css section in the head and then at the bottom script with cdn as well so yeah this is how relatively easy you can add quill editor to livewire form with alpine js and by the way, I have a separate course on Alpine.js if you're not familiar with the syntax of xdata and xinit and stuff like that. It's pretty simple to learn, so you can learn it from the official Alpine.js documentation as well. Or I summarize it in a course on Laravel Daily.com, which I will also link in the description below. So yeah, upgraded Livewire kit with Livewire 3. Check that out if you haven't already. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.